My next guest is Tulia Lopez. Originally from Brazil and now living in Munich, Germany, Tulia is an award-winning international speaker and communications expert, and she's on a mission to help women speak up, stand out, and lead. And she helps mainly her clients based in Switzerland, but is also expanding internationally and also back to her home country of Brazil. We talked on a number of points, three of which that stood out were how her former career as an architect was a great foundation for her current business, how she rebuilt her life after her first business in Spain collapsed during the financial crisis, and why she wants you to find your authentic voice instead of being an actor on the stage of life. Let's have a listen. This is the Expat Business Hero Podcast, and I'm your host, Alex Congdon. Hi, Tulia. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Good morning. Lovely to have you here. Um, Now, Tulia, I know you've won a number of uh, speaking awards, but I just want to imagine for a second that right now, you're on the stage in front of hundreds of people. Everyone's a bit restless in their seats and you can hear your breath in the PA system. And then you get the signal, it's go, you're on. So what's going on in your head? What's going on in your heart? Oh my goodness, I can feel it because you did it very well. Now I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first feeling. You start sweating, you start your body, your heart start pumping very fast. But um, all, after all these years, I learned my lesson. The important thing is, okay, you have your breathing and breathe out before you step on stage, but you have to tell yourself, my message matters and it, it's about my message it's not really about me so once you focused on your message that and you believe that what you have to say has an importance to that audience then then you're fine because then you go and you really enjoy it because you're there to give something to them. And if you really prepared yourself well by knowing who your audience is, their needs, their likes and dislikes, and if your message is well crafted, they will enjoy that too. And there will be an amazing interaction. And this interaction, even if it's not like a a day speaking at you, but you can feel the energy and that really boosts your, your confidence. And then you're just running the show and having fun. That's, that's the way I feel it. So I, I'm really curious then. So how do you go about training entrepreneurs or you know, female entrepreneurs on how to have better communication skills? How do you, how do you teach that? Yeah, that's, that's really my passion, Alex. And uh, it started from, I believe, where it should have started for myself. Because I got into uh, learning how to train communication and leadership skills. Although, as I say, we, everybody talks. And, but very few communicate and very few connect. Uh, by putting myself on those trainings back in 2009... I understood the need that we all have, not only women, everybody, in really crafting a message that's clear, really understanding first what we have to say and who is our target audience and then crafting a message for them. Because when you you are um, clear about what you want to share, that immediately boosts your confidence. And once you start telling your message and share your message and people start to really pay attention, then your confidence really boosts. And what I do when I, I have, I, you know, I focus more working with women and I have a very specific reason for that. I'm in a mission. So I really want how, to help women to boost their confidence and speak up because uh, it's the right moment. We are not going to go into the politics of that right now, but this is an opportunity now for women to really share what matters to them, what are the changes they want to see in the world, and what they can do to improve their environments everywhere they are. So my working with them is starting by uh, helping them to identify their, uh, identify their authentic voice. Who exactly is this person? And what is the message, what matters 
for for this person and what it, this person wants to share because you know we are entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs we are creative we want to share things we we and we believe that everything we want to share everybody wants it and sometimes we are very disappointed because we our message is we are focusing the the wrong market so the important thing is uh, to make sure that they understand who they are and what's the message they want to share and then the second thing would be to cross check if they are targeting the right market with their message because i think there are two things here or or their message should be changed if you, they really want to work in a specific market or they have to change the market. So this is, I believe, is up to them to decide because sometimes, um, let's say, I, I, this is a product, this is a, a service that I really want to provide and so then I have to really find the market that will understand what I need to share and of course adapt then my message to them. But then if it's something that is the other way around, I really work, want to work with people with certain age, let's say I have a, I'm coaching a lady now that she wants, her business is towards uh, the third, um, how would you say in English, in Portuguese we would say the third level generation, like the elderly people beyond yeah. 60s. So her, she wants to work with them. So it's not about her um, looking for another market. It's about her adapting her message to the market she wants to work with. So this is the, the important part of, of the whole process. And then, of course, there are techniques, how you, you, you stand in front of an audience. There is a, a lot of body language. But the important thing here uh, to understand that always starts from you because, because, listen to this, because your body talks all the time. And if your message is not clear for yourself, if you don't, if you don't really believe in what you're saying, guess what? Your body will show. And then is when you're talking to people, and I'm sure you, you have been this experience in your audience as well, when someone is telling you something and you feel something strange, and you just kind of not trust this person somehow, and you don't even know. And I tell you why, my friends, is your body is telling something. And if there is a misalignment, it's going to be showing in your body. And if there is a misalignment, trust the body. Amazing. So your mouth is saying one thing and your body is saying something else. You, got, you, exactly. got a you have a problem. Yeah. And what I, you, I say to my, to my um, mentees and uh, trainees is there's a big difference here. We are not actors or actresses. What we have to understand is an actor, their job is to go on stage or go on a movie and really, really incorporate a, a persona a character and believe and become that character in that right moment in time. And the better they do it, the most successful they would be as an actor or actress. Us, our character is ourselves. So we have to really understand who we are. We, when we want to give a message to an audience. And then, because your audience is expecting to see the same person who was talking to them on stage or in a conversation, in a meeting, when they go for coffee or they, when they go for a drink. Because if I am a different person, then no trust. Something is wrong. In, in the end, in the case of the actor or the actress, it's the other way around. You expect if you go for a drink with them or a coffee that you see a different person because if you don't, you think this person has a problem, right? So this is a, a, a very uh, simple example that I give to people for them to understand why, how important it is to really define your, who you are and to understand who you are, the way you uh, present yourself. And of course, there are techniques that can improve your strengths and can leverage your weaknesses. But at the end of the day, Tuli is Tuli, Alex is Alex. Because I am a person, you know me, your audience, 
probably don't know me, I can occupy a stadium. If you give me the space, I use it because that's my personality. I occupy space, so you have to stop me. And but some people, they are they don't occupy too much space, so I cannot work with them, telling them, "Oh, you have this huge stage. You have to run from one place to another." This is not going to work for that person. It's going to terrify the person. And what's going to happen, the message is not going to go through. So what I have to work with the person and say, okay, in your very um, reduced space that you feel comfortable with, you're going to deliver the best you have. And it doesn't matter. You know from yourself, everybody knows there are some people, they are like without any emotion in a stage but if their message is coming from a very deep uh, place where it's really aligned with who they are, they don't even need to move. So uh, these are the very important things that I started on my training. So it's not, I don't do any cosmetic. I say, I don't do makeups. <laughs> so we're going to have to work deep. We're going to have to work deep because once you know it, then you're fine. Then you're going to enjoy to be a, be yourself in front of people. You don't need to be anybody else. And I'm sure you heard this saying, like, be yourself because everybody else is taken. Yeah. So don't waste your time with that. Well, that's now I get it. So that's one of the best explanations I've heard about what authentic means. Because authentic is a word that's overused, I think. But yeah. for you being, you know, finding your authentic voice, that, yes. that's, that's what you mean by that. That's really, really helpful. Um, Oh, thank now, you. <laughs> no, it's a very good explanation. It's, it's clear for me now. Anyway. I sent the bill later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Put it in the post. Put um, in the post. Now, do you feel then for yourself personally as, as a woman who left their home country um, mm -hmm. and to set up a business, a number of businesses actually, mm -hmm. that things were harder for you because you're, you were a woman or is it, was it mainly because of the fact you were setting up a business away from home? I just want to understand a little bit the, the dynamic there for you. Yeah. Well, um, I have to confess that I don't uh, see a gender for myself. <laughs> Maybe I have to explain that. Is I never think that I am a woman, I'm going to have restrictions. So uh, I think I'm a lucky on that sense. Maybe I'm naive as well. But I never had this in my mind. This was not part of my reality as a professional. Maybe because, let's go back to our learnings in NLP or something, things like that, that because I come from a very matriarchal family from both sides. So there was always more women in my family, in both sides, and they were very active. So I did, never had this uh, confrontation of having, I, I didn't have a, a very patriarchal uh, environment in my close family my, with my parents. I, it was the other way around, matriarchal. So I think that explains that I never thought that being a woman would be a, an obstacle. Um, but it being outside, being abroad, it, it brings you challenges that, that probably wouldn't happen in my own country. But I, to be honest, I don't really know because I finished my career as an architect in my early 20s. And immediately after, I opened my uh, practice with a colleague. So these were things that we, we did uh, because everybody did the same. So in a few years after, I got the opportunity to work in Barcelona, in Spain, which was an amazing opportunity, early 90s, I'm not going to tell my age, early 90s, and I had the opportunity to work for, for the construction of Barcelona for the Olympic Games. So as a young architect, for me, it was like I was part of something very important. I was part of building the Barcelona, you know, today. And because of the whole situation, we were very fortunate. We, there was no shortage, uh, shortage of work. So we were working in very good conditions and, and we were fairly paid at the time because of the, of the whole situation. Then I had the opportunity to go uh, down to Seville for the, again, to work for the uh, Expo, International Expo 1992. 
if you remember. I do. And I worked on that as, as well. So it, it was like the opportunities came and I grabbed them. So I didn't have this mindset. So my next step then was I found the need of learning English because when I was in this environment in Barcelona and Seville building something that had an international impact, even if that was the early 90s, I saw the need of learning English. My English was very basic from school. So I moved to Ireland. I moved to Irish. So I moved to Dublin because someone told me, go to Dublin. Don't go to London. There are too many foreigners there. You'll never learn English there. Go to Ireland. <laughs> so I packed my things and went to Ireland to be there for two years and I stayed 13. But there in Ireland was where I discovered my entrepreneurial bug, as I say. Because, well, the first thing was to learn English and do all the, the, the typical working restaurants, waitressing, and to get the money to, to move on, to, to find, um, have, get the language to, to be able to move on. But I was very lucky. In six months, I, I got to work with uh, an architect there. But this, I, I'm going to give you another historical moment. 1994, Ireland was to become the European hub in software. So for the ones that uh, were there, it, it was the money was flowing in. They were building up many things, and they the big companies coming, all the big names in software, Microsoft and Apple, and you name it, and uh, they need the people to to do the job. But they um, because they have the, the all the management uh, level, but they need the people. So what happened was for all of us who were there, we got this working opportunities and also the opportunity to be trained to do the job. So it was very good. And again, I thought like, oh, this, this is interesting. I have no idea what it's about, but it, everybody is talking about. So I got into this, I say this boat and um, it it's was a Celtic, very, Celtic, Celtic tiger, wasn't it? It was the Celtic tiger. Ah, yes. So you're this Brazilian tiger going over to meet the Celtic tiger. And... Yes, the Brazilian tiger was, uh, I think it was uh, more the Brazilian leopard. Oh, okay. Okay, so going there to, to get, <laughs> or the Black Panther, Black Panther, going there to, to get the Celtic tiger. And that was an amazing uh, experience, Alex, because that was when I discovered that I could do something else. Although I, I, I loved architecture, and because it is creative, it's dynamic, it, there's no limitations in architecture. And this is like a, also one skill that I brought to entrepreneurship. That's what I, I'm going to share with your, your crowd, with your, your audience, because entrepreneurs, uh, one thing we need is to believe that what we, we are creating has, has a meaning and as important. And we, we doubt many times, right? And, uh, but it's normal. It, it's normal. To, it's, it, you can see as a cross check, but sometimes you can see as a paralysis as well. And the thing is, being an architect, my training required me to believe that everything that happens in my mind has the potential to become a physical reality. Right? Yes. So, and if I talk to you and you're sharing me something, you're my client and you're sharing something with me, my job is to really try to understand what Alex is telling me and read the between lines because, again, people don't have too much clarity to express themselves. So, I have really to look into all the corners of the conversation with you to try to understand what you have in mind and then bring that into physical reality to you. So that is a very handy skill to have if you want to become an entrepreneur because you, in a way, you, you believe that everything that comes to your mind can be possible, can be made reality, and you go for it. You, you don't really doubt it. You just try to find how am I going to make this happen. And this was an, a great experience for me uh, in the IT world because it gave me opportunities to challenge myself in fields that I had no experience. I had to learn uh, a lot. I didn't go into the technical part, but I, I learned uh, enough about the whole uh, system and the process and the, the sequences and the, how, uh, the, the, as, has, how the machine works and uh, what was my role on that. And I, I had the opportunity to be in several leading positions 
But again, I did all this very intuitively. I, I know I, I'm a people's person and uh, I'm, I get on with people very well, but this was very much like getting my intuition, reading some books, learning from other people and adapting here and there until I decided that um, I didn't want to spend the rest of my life in, behind a computer. I got a lot of experience and uh, well, the money was very, very good. And at the t there was a time I tried to combine architecture with the IT, but then in the end, IT won and for several diff different reasons. And then I started, I decided I wanted to do something more um, glamorous. I didn't want to be behind a computer anymore. It was really that because my life was becoming, this is another thing that entrepreneurs, we have to be very careful. I had the, the, the advantage that I was a provider. So I didn't have really to work within the companies. I didn't have a uh, um, fixed time for my work. So I worked out from home, but I have a routine. And what happens is uh, the business, uh, the IT world is always, you're always behind the schedule. Everything's for tomorrow, for, for yesterday, actually. And uh, I realized that I was spending too much time behind my computer and not really having a, a, a life. So uh, it was when got to the moment uh, that I said, enough is enough. I cannot cope with this anymore. And I am really getting old behind a computer. I don't have a life. And I decided to, to try something different. But then I said, what? What can I do now? Because it's a new restarting. And I had a very comfortable life. And uh, going back to architecture could be a possibility, but then could it be, would it be starting from the very beginning again? And because, you know, all this technology and processes change very fast. And I would have to spend there a lot of time learning and relearning certain things. And I said, well, let's do something for myself. And then that was when I said I decided to do something more glamorous and that will be more related to creativity. And I opened a design jewelry store with Brazilian design jewelry in Ireland in the early and uh, that was, I think, if I'm correct, 2003, approximately, 2003. And uh, again, it was uh, an opportunity. I saw the market. I saw, uh, I did my marketing research, okay? And I saw the market didn't have those type of jewelry, uh, precious, semi-precious stones with uh, silver, gold-plated, and very extravagant and things like that. And uh, it was a great success. And I was in the media, I was on TV, I was on newspapers, I became famous. And the Brazilian embassy loved me because I was their best business card. And I developed, with that, I developed a very good relationship in that level. And saying that, a relationship that even today helps me because when I move to a different country, I contact my contacts, the past, and I say, by the way, I'm moving to that different, to that country. Do you have anybody there that can just introduce to me, for, to me to understand how things work there? So, um, so I built very good contacts and very good relationships. And, and, and then it was my opportunity to put in practice my learnings and if I could handle a business. And that was very good. But there's a big but, isn't there, coming next? Yeah. But, and then it comes about, maybe it goes back to the question you asked me about women in business and uh, doing things. Because at the time, I was married to a Cuban man. Okay. And, well, yeah, so but nobody understands it, but marrying a Cuban island. And um, then what happened was the success of the lady was a little bit disturbing for the man. Yeah. So, and I think this, uh, uh, we can see this uh, uh, in many areas and many places. And I'm sure you have experiences yourself, like seeing when couples, when the women become very successful and it's in the media is, uh, and that can really uh, affect a relationship. And, 
And, and then, well, long story short, I'm not going to cry all my tears here with you. It's past. It's over. Oh, go on. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> Oof. And then what happened? Uh, I, I we we got divorced, and at that time, I said, okay, I don't want to stay here in Ireland. I wanted. Uh, I always had them back at uh, the back of my mind that I wanted to go back to Spain. It's more. It's more my kind of living, right? Ireland is great. I really love it. I spent there. 13 years almost. And I'm very grateful for all the opportunities I have there, all the rest. But I said, no, in my situation right now, I think the best if I start from scratch. So I did. I sold everything, all, everything, and packed my personal belongings, including my dog. And then we moved to Barcelona together to start a new life. And everything was going fine. I just replicated my store there. So I had the experience. I had the, the, the providers. I had, I had to adapt certain things. The same store, the same jewelry, everything. Same store. It was Julia country. Lopez, Dublin, Barcelona. Mm. Because I kept my store in, in Dublin. So I just, I had someone in, looking after the store in Dublin and I moved to Barcelona. And during this process, uh, you know, every business, entrepreneurs, we know nothing happens from one day to another. There's a cycle and it's a lot of hard work at the beginning until we start seeing the curve going up, right? So when my curve was going up in Barcelona, when I said, okay, now I have it. Now I got it. I have the right product. I, the, uh, the people understand what I am about. My message is clear. The audience is there. The customers are there. Now, let, now let's start rocking. Then 2008, European crisis came to place. So that, one, my friend, I'm going to tell you, yeah, that was a big fall. Everything Really, crashed. really big. Because for the business I was running, and design jewelry, who wants to design jewelry when people are not buying their food, right? At the time, I don't know, you're part of, of the world in Europe and how it was, how it affected, I don't know where you were at the time, but I can tell you that in Spain, it really hit hard. I think there's a, a psychological part on that as well because these people have been through wars, they have been through a lot of difficult times past in history. And what happens is they um, they really panicked, and they stop they stopped buying. They stopped buying even food, in to the point that the government would go on TV and ask the people, "You have to buy because if we don't buy, we don't the economy doesn't move." So then the lady here had to face a lot of uh, challenges, which were the challenges of um, restarting again. I had to close my business. But then, you know, closing a business, it also doesn't happen from one day to another. There's a process. There are all the stock I have to get away, all the bills I have to pay, and the money was not coming in. So what can I do? And on those moments, I discovered uh, it was a very tough learning. I don't uh, wish... I mean, how was it for you? I mean, for your mindset? Well, your, for your my mind. mindset, it was a disaster. Yeah. Because I was the Tulia win, 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 go, go, go. And, uh, but in that moment, I realized that, that my life was always having like that. Because of this mindset that I had, uh, that I could do anything, that I could create whatever I wanted. And if you see my, in my website, I even set, have a, my own quote is, I'm a creator. And if I don't find a door, I build one. And I do believe on that. However, I realized that I never gave myself time to really reassess one step after the other. I was very much moved by this energy that I have, but one thing after the other went move, 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 move. Okay? When I collapsed with all, like I stopped selling from one day to another, there was no sales. It's like, it was horrible. It was a horrible feeling. And, and then you have to pay your bills. You have uh, your credits to pay. You have suppliers to pay. You have to, you have to survive. And then you start thinking, what am I going to do? And also you feel there's a pride that you feel like humiliated. You feel like that you're a failure and you don't want to show as a failure. And even more, the lady here in high heels, 
that I was always well dressed with my jewelry in my heels, in my smile. But I had then to keep that persona going on in order to close it. Mm. Because the other thing I've learned also, and I knew that before, but that was very clear, that um, people, when you are in very difficult situations, uh, it might be that people run away from you. Because they get afraid of uh, getting involved to your, into your mess. And even more, when the mess is financial, then many people disappear. And I had this experience. I had people very close to me, which I considered friends, who from one day to another blocked communication with me fully. Mm. See, up to now, I don't know about them. So you're discovering who your f- real friends were. Right? Yeah, and that stuff. That's really horrible. But at the same time, let's say here, let's be fair. There are other people that come from you don't know where. They've been around you. They've been observing you. And now all of a sudden they come to you and say, do you know, if you need my help, I'm here. And that is amazing. And that is what keeps you going. So I found those people too. But I had a lot of mess to fix. And in that moment, uh, uh, what I discovered was also my struggle in my negotiation skills, in my communication. And this I say, and this is one thing that we we talk about and that women uh, lacking good negotiation skills, women not knowing how to set the standards and the boundaries for herself. And, and I was in that situation. I saw myself in that situation because when I had to really um, define what would be the best deal here in this situation that's not good for anybody, but try to, to get the middle term, it was very difficult for me to defend my own side. I realized that I was not really good to, to protect myself. I was very much giving away and like as if... I wanted to get rid of the situation and move on, but I had to, I could not just give everything away. I had to really fight for certain things. And that, um, that was really tough. That was really, it was a really conflict with me. And I think many women go through this when you have, is when you have to set your prices, when you have to set in in a negotiation, you want to to really uh, stand from what you're saying. So I have to face a lot of, tough discussions with banks for example and that was wow it was draining that was really really and this is was one of the reasons that led me to um how can i say opened my interest in learning about communication skills because i realized that i'm although i'm very communicative very i'm an extro- extrovert but i i realized that my ability to really stand on my point and to my message and to defend myself, my values, what it was very shaky. And I want to, I want, I, I didn't want to have this experience again. So long story short, uh, I, it took me one year to close the business. Can you imagine one year? Mm, yeah. One year of pain. Tough. Tough. I looked for support. And um, interesting enough, my, my brother, being a man, told me, you need an accountant. You need some money, finance to help you. And, but deep down, I said, no, I don't need that. That can be organized. But what I need is someone to understand why did I put myself in this mess? And what I looked for was someone that could help me on that understanding. And I started working with this person. We used to meet uh, once a week. And there were long conversations, long, a lot of tears draw, like given away. And, but it was a very important process of my life because I understood patterns that I had. I understood also how... Um, uh, how can I say, I was not gentle with myself. I, and then goes back to family. As I said, big family with women where we have to always to perform. And that was my history. I'll, always a performer and a deliverer. 
at, at the liver. Um, and I never gave myself time to really look after myself as a person. And I always have to show that I, I could do it, that I was capable to make it, and that I could make it big always until I collapsed. And uh, even uh, healthy matters because I never really, I always believed that I'm very strong, that I'm very healthy. And in this person um, was really um, brought into my awareness how I was not looking uh, after myself in the healthy aspect of my life. And that I, I never had this because I, I always felt I, I'm healthy. I keep going. Yeah. So there were many routines and habits, new habits that I had to introduce into my life. And tell me uh, how difficult it is to teach an old, I say, you say an old dog. I say oh, an old bitch. So that is so yes, It's old dog tricks. That's what we say. Oh, that was very difficult. And yeah. And, but then when I got into this, it was through Toastmasters International. Let, let give the, uh, uh, let's give the credit to, to the institution. Where I got into Toastmasters before was more for to get away from yeah. all this mess to meet different people. And, but then there, as their core is communication leadership, I, and is a very systematic process. Then I, I got into it and I said, oh, damn, if I just knew all of this 10 years ago, my life would have been so different. So um, in Beyond those masters, then I invested on that. I invested on communication leadership because I wanted to become a better person. I wanted to become a better person for myself because I, w I really wanted to understand myself and be gentle to myself and allow myself to make mistakes, allow myself to say silly things and nothing happens, but then really define what I, was my purpose, which is the big question that we all ask, right? And even more as an entrepreneur, we always ask, what is our purpose? And this is a big question yes. to answer. And I think uh, there's no one question for that. I think there are several. And that goes throughout our, uh, different times of our lives. And, and then in 2011, when I moved to Switzerland, because I love again, not to my door, and I moved to Switzerland, I started visiting women's groups. I was already giving some trainings and back in Barcelona. But then I identified some kind of patterns in Switzerland in the entrepreneurial community because um, there is a, there's a kind of specific patterns that happen in the entrepreneurial community, female community in Switzerland, which is very short. Um, most of them are professionals who come following their husband who got the big job and then they get to Switzerland, they don't find opportunities and they become an entrepreneurs. But there's a lot of conflict in their communication and also redefining themselves in an in entrepreneur as an entrepreneur is, is a difficult process. Even if you have a, pro, uh, a profession that you, you enjoy and you wanted to pursue, but then you see there's no opportunities there, you have to recreate yourself. And then I saw that I could support on that, on that level. So then it was when everything started over again. And last year, I consolidated all this, everything that I have been doing with this past years with the academy. When I consolidated the Speak Up and Lead Academy, where now I have everything in a systematic process. They stage one, two, and three for, for all the ladies who want really to find their authentic voice. So this... Um downfall of your business back in Spain was a, was a big turning point for you, I think. Mm, and absolutely. I, I think also what you're saying is that you also realized that you had to let the universe help you. you. You know, you had to let help come into you. You had to reach out. And I think a lot of people realize that because a lot of people struggle to ask for help. Mm. Um, yeah. Now, you mentioned to me previously that you like to surround yourself today by people that, mm. that support uh, you or that you can learn from. Can you talk a little bit about who you surround yourself with today? Yeah. Um, I've noticed throughout my life that I always somehow have people around me. And this is uh, my mission today, Alex, is very much, I think there are certain things in life we see, but we, we deny. We don't want that. 
And I did, I did never wanted to have uh, people around me on a level that they wanted me to give them advices. They wanted me to, to um, they saw me as a support because I had this independent spirit and I wanted to be free. And that was, made me feel like, oh, all these people that need me. So what happened was throughout this process and, and this realization, I, I found that my, my mission is this. I am, there's not for granted that I have this capability of be surrounded by people. That I attract people without knowing, without noticing. And even more in this uh, um, virtual world that we live, and I go to events sometimes, and it's terrifying because people come to me, hi, Tulia, finally we meet. And I said, oh, my God, <laughs> who is this person? And then it's that little picture from the Facebook that you have to amplify <laughs> in the real person. So uh, what happened was, in, through this process, I understood that um, I also – need people okay that i and from this understanding that i also need to support uh, be supported by others then i understood really my role and i felt like oh this is a little bit selfish of me denying this if i have the gift to help that's what i should do and, and nowadays is the two ways because I'm surrounded by people. I, I attract people, but I understood also that these people that I can support in some way, they can also support me in a different way. So it's the, the, the beauty is to build this, this bond. Like look at us here, you know, you're sharing our stories and sharing stories is a beautiful way to really connect. And that's what I, I, I'm very aware right now. And of course, I started investing on myself more and more because I realized that um, the more I know, the more I don't know. And the more I have to know, right? So that's a circle. And, and that's, that's what I do. Now, if you look at the future for yourself, what, what's in store for you? I mean, and, I, and I'm trying to get a little bit into your belief system around goals and the future. Yes, you asked me the question before, and that was a very difficult one to answer. And I said to you that it took me a while to understand the path I wanted to be. Because I, as I always allowed myself to embrace new opportunities, I was being curious creative so I can be moved from one thing to another very very quickly and enjoy the ride but now I see that this is I consider my mission really in my what I see in the next years my role my the process to be to consolidate what I'm doing and to be able to build a legacy in a sense not from the ego point of view okay i don't need that is in really to get the ones that are around me that can spread this everything we are achieving right now in terms of building up confidence and developing better communication skills becoming better leaders and giving better um, opportunities to creating better opportunities to our communities I really want this to create like a ripple effect. I believe like if I can influence five people and each of them can influence five and each of those five can influence five. So that is my, really my mission. Is this really the way I'm building my business? It's not about me being, becoming famous, although I love big stage. So don't take me wrong, but it has nothing about that. It's about being able to reach as many people as I can, but above all, to empower them, to really help them to find this authentic voice that everybody has and that they be able to express and share their story in a way that will create a positive impact in their communities. Because I am a believer of the good things. I, although we see all this, there are many ugly things happening around in the world right now, 
but I, be, I believe in the good things. I think there are more good things than bad things. And in fact, some statistics say that it has never been less bad things than now. It's just because now we have more access to them. We can see them and we can hear them. And before we didn't have that, that access. But anyway, I believe we should, uh, we all have a capacity for big changes. And these big changes start from us and started from us changing our mindset, believing that we can do it and believing that we are here for doing something. We are not here on holidays. Holidays is good, but we are here for doing to create an impact and to make a difference. Now, Tilia, I, I'd like to close on a, on a final question and ask you, if you could choose, you know, in terms of giving back, if you could choose someone to mentor, you know, for mm -hmm. free, just out, of your, just out of your generosity, who would that person or that group be? Could you, just, could you describe them to me? Yeah, perfectly, because this is my next step. Alex, not for this year, but I'm thinking considering for the next year, I want to get into the next uh, younger generation. So my market are around, is around the 30s, the ladies 30s up, but I really want to get into, um, I even dare to say, the 17, 18 years old that if I could uh, get them from that stage where they, we have all these big decisions to make in life, that the poor, poor of us, that we have so much pressure, and uh, it's a crucial moment for, for that confidence to be, to be anchored, you know, and if I can help them on that, and I believe that I'm not necessarily the person to help them, but I can be the, the catalyzer. This is why I say I can, my, my idea is to have younger ladies with me, which like I, I have ladies on their 20s and that they come to me. So because these people will relate more to them than to me, like there I'll be the mama. <laughs> so <laughs> they probably don't want to, to listen to the mama. So they can listen to someone closer to them. And if we can start really building up the confidence of those guys at that age, then, then the world will be a different world in future generations. Fantastic. That's my dream. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Tuli, I want to thank you very much. Um, I'm going to put all of the ways in which people can reach you on the show notes below. And I've got your personal website, tulialopez.com. And you've got the Academy website, which is speak up and lead academy.com but all the details will be below and i just want to fit, find, you know finish off by just acknowledging you thanking you for the work that you do um in in inspiring empowering um uh, w women women entrepreneurs to find their authentic voice i think it's a great thing that you do and uh, i want to acknowledge and then thank you you know thank you on their behalf and look forward to doing this again in the future Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity because, you know, it's, it's part of what I have to do. I have to speak up and share. And the more I speak, the more people start listening. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Alex.